Hello again, everybody. My name is Marty Guthmiller, uh, the CEO at Orange City Area Health System. Um, welcome back to the 22nd edition of the COVID-19 Community Briefing. Um, I just want to, uh, it's been a few days, and so I'm going to give you a, a lot of numbers today. So, uh, and I'll also give you the source for these numbers, and you can look those up as well. Uh, well, I might as well do that now. Uh, coronavirus dot iowa dot gov coronavirus dot iowa dot gov it can give you a lot of this information i'll give you the reader's digest version of it but if you want to drill down deeper into some things you can uh, go take a look at that corona I, coronavirus dot iowa dot gov first of all the local scoreboard that i've been presenting to you uh, throughout these briefings uh, as predicted, we have our number of tests are going up. Uh, we're doing that uh, primarily because of our uh, screenings for same day procedures, non-essential uh, surgeries, those types of things. Um, and so our numbers are going up. We are at 212. Uh, our positives are at 18. Uh, I'm gonna talk a lot about these percentage positives today. So keep, keep this number in mind, our positive, ratio is 8.5 percent 18 tests out of 212. that's an important number to keep in mind that's that's a relatively low number um, that's a good number and it's it's been really eight to nine percent probably for the duration of of this season of covid so enough for that right now um, we do have 19 tests that are pending uh, but again most of those are pending um, that we do not anticipate being positive because they're by and large not symptomatic patients. At the county level, a little bit different story. We've had 210 positives at the county level, uh, the, the latest stats that I have, again, coronavirus.iowa.gov, uh, 210 positives out of 969 tested. Uh, the quick math on that yields a positive percentage of 21.7, so nearly 22%. Uh, contrast that again with our own numbers here, uh, Orange City Area Health System only at eight and a half percent. So there's significant numbers um, uh, elsewhere in the county relative to the positive percentage. Look at those numbers to go up, the numbers in terms of tests conducted and but not necessarily the percent positive. Those numbers actually should go down because of the fact that Test Iowa is, I believe, opening today in Sioux Center. And uh, you can go to testiowa.com, testiowa.com. And uh, basically, if you want to test, you're gonna get one. Um, uh, personally, to me, uh, there's limited value in that, um, but you can certainly do that if you want. Um, in some situations, it would be of value. Uh, but for me, I would rather have, uh, I'd rather know whether I had the antibody. And so that IgG test uh, that we had talked about before would be something of interest to me personally, more so certainly than uh, the swabbing test that is being performed uh, to know if you have the disease. Uh, again, I would rather know if I had it uh, from an antibody standpoint. But again, that opens today. My guess is you're gonna see our numbers tested in the county go up substantially. Um, as a result of that, most of those are gonna be asymptomatic patients that are fine. Uh, therefore, it should lower that result or that percent positive. TestIowa.com, um, and you can figure out how to do things uh, from that site. Hospitalizations is another uh, key statistic that we've been looking at over time. There are currently 332 uh, hospitalized COVID-19 patients in Iowa. Um, that's as of May 25, that's the latest number we have on, on the coronavirus uh, website. Of those 332, one is in Sioux County zero in O'Brien County, zero in Lyon County, five in Plymouth County. So that, that's a little bit more. We've been seeing zero and one in Plymouth, but we have five in Plymouth County right now. 
We still have over 50 in Woodbury County at 51. Uh, Polk County uh, is still the highest number in that, and that, but that number is coming down. Uh, that number is at 95. Uh, they had been over 100 for quite a while. It's at 95 today. Also, something that you may have heard about more in the region uh, is is what's going on in Buena Vista County. Um, and so I looked at that. Um, their current hospitalization rate as of May 25th was 10. So again, not not filling up the hospital there. Um, so there's there's been some stuff on social media. Um, so I wanted to look at that and, and give you a little bit of data on that as well. Again, if you want to fire uh, follow that yourself, uh, go ahead to the uh, coronavirus uh, website. Stepping up from the county level a little bit more and from the region would be Region 3. Again, uh, Iowa's part of, uh, Orange City's part of uh, Region 3, which is a 20 county uh, grouping in Northwest Iowa. There are currently 109 patients hospitalized in those 20 counties. The number was 110 yesterday, so really not much difference. Um, in the last 24 hours, which is an indication of what's going on, uh, there were seven uh, hospitalizations in the last 24 hours. There were 11 the day before, so that's good. That's going from 11 to seven uh, is a good thing. Um, but at the same time, there are 42 uh, ICU patients in region three, 42. Yesterday, that number is 39. So that did grow by three patients uh, in a day. All of these numbers are to indicate that this thing's not over yet um, by any means. Now, when you look at the bell-shaped curve for Iowa, things are going down. When you look at the, the bell-shaped curve for Sioux County, not so much. Uh, we're still having a, a number of, of uh, positives in Sioux County. Uh, but we hope to start seeing that number go down. When we look at the state level, we have now one of 23 Iowans tested. So that number continues to diminish, but again, still it's a pretty small number. Um, 18,220 positives. Uh, here's the percentage again. The positive percentage of those tested is 13%. So at the state level, we're at 13.1. At the county level, we're at 21.7, and at our local hospital level, we're at 8.5. And so that kind of puts things in perspective. Again, as we test more, and as the number of negatives are expected to increase as well, uh, that percentage should come back down uh, again, and the, and the state is showing that at a 13% rate. Again, people are still dying from this disease. In, in Iowa, the number is 481 deaths that have been reported. The closest one to us is one death that was reported in Plymouth County. 28 deaths have been reported um, from Woodbury County. It's kind of interesting, I thought, to look at this. We've always heard about um, the elderly population being disproportionately affected. Um, and that's proving to be the case. And of those 481 deaths, 87%, so nearly 90% of those 481 deaths were on people age 61 and over. Um, so, so again, generally speaking, it's a 61 and over issue. Um, it is with, with other underlying medical conditions. Um, I'm not saying that to minimize anything, but uh, that all comes into play as we begin to open up the economy again. So again, 87% of the deaths in Iowa, um, age 61 and over. Um, just thought I would review a couple things on the governor's most recent proclamation. Um, you, you may already be aware of that, but this kind of distills a few things down. Again, the uh, uh, the entirety of the proclamation can be viewed on the governor's website, but here are a couple things. Bars, wineries, breweries, distilleries uh, may open on May 28, again with social measures, uh, distancing measures, mitigation measure, measures in place. 
Effective June 1, so Monday is a big day, additional establishments may open, including outdoor performance venues, casinos, bowling alleys, amusement parks, skating rinks, skate parks, and outdoor playgrounds. Um, effective 6-1 also, social, community, recreational, leisure, and sporting gatherings and events of more than 10 people may resume if public health measures are implemented and adhered to. An important part of this is, is that these venues must uh, establish policies that, that limit them to 50% of capacity. So if you have a stadium of 3,000 people, uh, you could only have 1,500 there, as long as that 1,500 meant that you can keep people at least six feet apart uh, with other uh, public health measures adhered to. Um, it also means this under this proclamation is, is uh, where summer sports can happen again. Practices can start effective June 1, and I, I believe that uh, games are going to start like around June 15. So, uh, so that's good. Uh, we're ready to go, get things rolling again as of June 1. Um, and again, I just referenced the testiowa.com site uh, that's opening today in Sioux Center. Just uh, finally, you know, we continue to review our plans um, here. We will relax uh, some of these restrictions as soon as we're comfortable doing that, reasonably comfortable. Um, things like uh, patient visitors being able to come back maybe one at a time, uh, nursing home relaxation, maybe starting with spouses, uh, that kind of thing. We're not ready for that right now, but please understand and know that we are thinking about those things daily and we will reopen and relax those standards, not only when we get permission to do so, but when we feel comfortable based on our own local uh, expertise and awareness of what's going on. What, what's in Sioux County right now is maybe not reflective of what the total state is seeing. Um, and so just because some, somebody from Des Moines says, go ahead, you can open up your nursing home, it's still gonna be dependent on, on uh, what our medical folks are telling us and what our infection control policies are and, and where our comfort level is with that. Um, so we'll continue to do that. Continue to urge people to um, resume their wellness and screening activities. Um, again, this is a safe place to be. Uh, this being the hospital and clinic. Uh, we want you back. Um, you should come back. Uh, we don't want that the uh, consequences of COVID-19 to be undetected cancers or undetected other problems. Uh, we continue to hear stories about, uh, well, somebody was having a very serious event at home and just didn't come in, just didn't get it checked out because they were afraid of the fear factor thing. And so please understand, it's safe to come back. We urge you to continue to uh, contemplate, uh, if you haven't already, resuming wellness activities. Um, control what you can control and begin to live your lives. Uh, we really encourage you to do that. Uh, we have to look in the mirror uh, when we say that too, because uh, we're, all, we're all people and we're all uh, have the same issues. But this is a safe place. Please control what you can control. and. Uh, keep that engine finely tuned. Um, as I close, I just want to remind you to stay vigilant, stay strong, and stay healthy. Thank you again for trusting us to care for you, and thank you for joining us in this briefing.